Alright, so nagbabalik ang yung host, AJ Kasentay, and welcome back again po dito sa ating Bura Bura live streaming session, okay? So, maganda-magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Time check, it's already 9.18 in the morning, and today is March 3, 2022. So, good morning po sa lahat ng viewers natin right out there, dito po sa ating live stream via Facebook Live. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, okay, ang topic ulit natin ngayon is visual arts, okay? So, sabi ko sa inyo last time, one week tayong visual arts pero iba-iba po ang ating mga discussions so right now po okay i would like to introduce to you my discussions my discussing team right now so all the way from bachelor of secondary education major in english freshman ladies and gentlemen let's welcome okay palakpakan po sa ating mga ang uh, discussion ngayong umaga all the way from the said english one okay so isa-isa po natin ladies and gentlemen i would like to call on our respective um Discussants. Okay, so bati muna kayo mga discussants natin. Okay, so starting with we have Mom Nicole Nudo. Mom, bati ka po. Good morning, everyone, and also to the viewers. Good morning. All right, Mom, tagasan po sila. I'm from Gabon, Pulangi Albay po. All right, so shout out sa ating mga taga barangay Gabon, Pulangi Albay. Okay, so thank you very much, Mom Nicole, and we have Mom Julian. Chris Thur Les Tanko. Ma'am, bati ka po. Good morning everyone and also to our viewers. I'm Julian Chris Thur Les Tanko from Anvil Homes of the Vision, Kinale. Alright, so shout Anvil Homes. <laughs> Tara naman sana pala ni kabalay ninyo sa amo. <laughs> si Sir Nyo, Tagalo mo, no, pinapumunta dyan. <laughs> Di ba malapit lang. Okay, so shout out po sa mga taga-barangay, Kinale. Right there po sa and Bill. Thank you very much, Mom Julian Listanko. And we have Mom Frenzel Casimira. Mom, bati ka po. Good day, sir. Good day, classmates. To my friends, the Juju, to my family, and to everyone from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. In front of your screen is no other than but the goddess of beauty. I am Frenzel <laughs> Casimiro of Besaid English One. Alright! The goddess of beauty, kakaloka. Ano yung Juju? Ano yun? Sino yung mga yun? <laughs> Grupo po namin, squad namin po. Oh, kami rin may squad kami ng baby ko. Tropang pot-pot. <laughs> Tropang pochi. Alright. So, taga saan nga si ma'am? Taga Hollywood. Ay, ano? Centro <laughs> Occidental po. Pulagi Albay. Ilawood. Alright. So, shout out po sa mga taga Barangay Hollywood. Centro Occidental Pulagi Albay. <laughs> Alright. So, thank you very much, ma'am. Okay? So, asahan namin mamaya ang Hollywood presentation mo. <laughs> Okay, so we have Ma'am Rina Bonita. Ma'am, bati ka po. Hello, good morning everyone. I am Rina Kitalia Bonita from Bised English 1. I'm from Badian Uwas Albay po. Okay, so one from um, Uwas Albay. Okay, so shout out po sa mga taga-barangay Badian Uwas Albay. Galing kami last time dyan, nag-swimming kami. Kasi po pumunta dito yung mga Pasig Pips. Okay, yung mga relatives namin sa Pasig. So, pumunta kami ng Kagmanaba. Doon kami sa Victoria Bay. Okay? So, di ba yung sunod-sunod na yan? Kagmanaba. Ano sunod sa Kagmanaba? Badian na ba? Opo. Kagmanaba. Alright. Alright. So, thank you very much, Ma'am Rina. Okay? So, shoutout ulit sa inyo, mga taga-barangay. Hmm. Badian. Doon po yan sa West Coast. Alright. So, thank you very much po, Ma'am. And we have Ma'am Edgely Medina. Ma'am, bati ka po. Hi everyone, I'm Edgely J. Medina from Mendes, Bulangi, Albay. Alright, shout out. Have a good day. Okay, so shout out po sa mga taga-barangay Mendes, Bulangi, Albay. Okay, batiin ko ko pala dyan si Ma'am, ano yan, Joy Susan. <laughs> Ma'am, bili ka po ng imbutido ulit. <laughs> Di-deliver ulit ako dyan sa inyo. Baka nakita mo ako dyan, Edgely, eh. nagtitinda ko lang ano yan, <laughs> kung ano-ano. <laughs> diba, si Sir Nino. Teacher na, seller pa. Alright, so thank you very much, Ma'am Edgely. And we have Ma'am Krisha Lee. Ag Gwenza. Ma'am, bati ka po. Good morning, everyone. I'm Krisha Licanaria Agwenza and I hope that we are all doing okay and I want to greet my father who is my number one fan. Good morning to all and to my family and friends. Thank you. Alright, so sana all my fans. <laughs> Alright, so shout out sa iyong family. Okay, lalo lalo sa iyong father. Okay, so by the way, ma'am, from where po kayo? I'm from Lidong, Pulangi, Albay po. Okay, so you're from Lidong, Pulangi, Albay. Okay, so saan sa Lidong? Kasi yung asawa ko taga Lidong. <laughs> Baka nakikita mo ako dyan palagi. Zone 4, sir. Ah, okay. So, sentro kayo? 
Yes. Right. Okay, so thank you very much, ma'am. Shout out ulit sa mga taga-barangay Lidung. Ulangi Albay. And we have Ma'am Maria Lourdes Bakiran. Ma'am, bati ka po. Hello po, good morning. So, I'm Maria Lourdes Albacran po from Barangay Maymada. Oh, so magkalapit lang kayo. Oh, po lang din. Yes. Oh, diba? Oh, may pa, magpaligid-ligid sa nako ito pa baba. May naganaling leader. <laughs> okay, so meron tayong dalawa from Upland, Pulangi Albay. Okay, so shoutout po sa mga taga-barangay, may naga Pulangi Albay. So, thank you very much, Ma'am Lourdes. And we have Ma'am Angie Catherine Dalma. Ma'am, bati ka po. Oh, so, good morning, everyone. I'm Angie Catherine S. Dalma, all the way from Sikad Subdivision, Pulangi Albay. All right, so the land of the faithful. All right. <laughs> So from Sigad Pulangi Albay. Okay, nakakaloka yung entrada ni Mami. May pumuta kakaloko party popper. <laughs> hey, Kasi nagkarago yan sa likod mo. <laughs> uh, gulat na yung mga special effects na si Ma'am. Alright, so thank you very much Ma'am Angie um, Dalma. Okay, shout out ulit sa mga taga-barangay Sigad Pulangi Albay. And we have Ma'am Christine uh, Briobo Acuña. Ma'am, pati po. Oh, medyo malayo yung mic mo. Oh. Lapit ko ng konti. Oo. Ayan. Taga saan si ma'am? Oh, so malayo. Medyo malayo si ma'am. Ligas P. So, nandiyan ka ngayon sa sentro ng Albay. Okay? So, shoutout sa mga taga Ligas P City. Right? Okay? Thank you very much, ma'am Christine. And we have ma'am Angelica Sabaresa. So hello, hello everyone. I'm Angelica C. Sabarista. I'm from San Pablo, ay San Juan, Centro Oriental. Ano so, ba talaga? Shout out dun, <laughs> <laughs> shout out dun sa friend ko <laughs> na nanonood dito ngayon. San Juan. Opo, oh, San Juan, Centro Oriental. Ah, kaloka. <laughs> San Pablo. Kalilipat <laughs> lang po kasi namin. Ay, bakit? Okay. Uh, where were you running? Ilawin po ako dati. Ah, okay. So, dyan na kayo ngayon sa San Juan. Yes, po. Alright, so shoutout po sa mga taga-barangay Ang Centro Oriental Diyan po sa Purok San Juan Or San Juan Street Centro Oriental Pulang Kialbay Thank you very much Ma'am Angelica And we have Ma'am Alia Jane Salire Bati ka po Ma'am Good morning everyone I am Alia Jane Manalo Salire From Bisad English Tubig Ah, uh, irregular ka Ma'am? Yes po sir Oh, si Sarah, na, alam mo lang nga nito, binagunga pa. <laughs> Then, I just want to clarify this because, ano yan, marami talaga po ngayon ang medyo, ano yan, uh, irregular students due to pandemic. Because there are some ano, instances na, uh, ano yan, merong mga, ano yan, i-consider, ano yan, for, ano yan, um, uh, let's say, ano yan, uh, redoing the classes. Uh-oh. Kasi, ano yan, we're not living in the, the same normal. We're living in the new normal. But anyway, so we'll try to do our best, ma'am. Right, ma'am? So, ma'am, taga saan po sila? Taga Ubalio po. Sir. Oh, ang layo ng lugar mo. <laughs> Yung kaulit sa Balio ng sentro. Okay? So, shout out sa mga taga barangay Ubalio, Pulangi, Alba. Thank you very much, ma'am. Alia Jane Salira. Ladies and gentlemen, sila po yung bumubuo sa ating discussing team ngayon pong umaga, okay, with regards to the discussion of visual arts along Jack 16 and that is arts appreciation. Huwag kayong aalis and we'll be right back. Alright, so nagbabalikan yung host, Shay J. Kasensai, and welcome back ulit sa ating Burabura live stream session here sa ating subject, which is Arts Appreciation. So, ladies and gentlemen, wag natin patagalin pa, and let's start out the discussion. First, let's call on our discussion. We have Ma'am Prenzel Casimiro. Ma'am, take it away. Good day, everyone. Hello. Again, I am Prenzel of Visad English One. But before we talk all the introduction to visual arts, let us take a look first to our learning outcomes. First, to amplify, sir, next slide po. 
learning objectives. First, to amplify the sense of creativity of the learners and become more acquainted of the different types, forms, and examples of visual arts. Next, to appreciate the significance of visual arts to our surroundings and everyday lives. And to reflect and understand the different ideas and emotions of the people and become more active on socializing and participating to various activities. So now, let us decode the answer to the question, what is visual arts? So visual arts covers a broad field of creative practice. It involves arts, art forms such as painting, drawing, printmaking, sculpture, ceramics, photography, video, filmmaking, designs, crafts, and architecture. It conveys message of emotions, ideas, or information. Basically, visual arts tends to attract anyone through its appearances, from the lines, figures, to the colors. But one thing that makes an art special is because of the meaning that it has. Like, at kung isipin nga natin, a single picture could could tell the whole situation. Like sa unang tingin, alam mo na, gets mo na. But, like reading a novel, visual arts also requires a deep understanding to its every details. To avoid some misinterpretations, of course. Next slide po, sir. Okay. Okay na. Oh. It helps the artist and audience and learners in improving their skills and academic performance like in learning areas of math, science, as well as literary field. So being creative, creativeness or being imaginative results on having a positive emotion that reduces stress or anxiety that helps the mentality of an individual to operate productively. So next, the visual arts are those art forms intended to be appreciated or perceived primarily by sight. So this part, it points out the audience or viewers. The viewers, wherein of course they could appreciate visual arts primarily through through visions, through their visions. So next, it involves the hand, the eye, the intellect, and the imagination. So this definition class, this part, I'm kind of posing the structure of its idea. Next slide po, sir. Ayan na. <laughs> wherein, wherein it should be anyone. Not everyone, but anyone should have an access to the visual arts. So anyone who can imagine also could create an artwork and could express themselves through an artwork. Just like Gokaran Patil, who came from Chhattisgarh, India, that was born without hands and with hearing impairment. However, he did not let that stand in the way of his dream of becoming an artist. He was trained in computer applications and has a master's degree in fine arts. His works reflect the folk art and culture of Chhattisgarh and, won, and has won prizes in hundreds of art competitions. So imagine, even without his hands, he could he could still express his creativity through his feet, and that led him to his success. But here's the catch class. How about those visually impaired people? How do visually impaired people enjoy art? Next slide, put, sir. Let's consider Ashraf Armegan. Born in 1953 in Istanbul, Turkey, he had one eye the size of lentil. So you know, class the lentil or like the peanut, like the seeds or the green peas. And the other eye was fully formed but totally non-functional, leaving him completely blind. Despite, despite his blindness, Ashraf had a strong desire to discover the world around him and express himself through color and art. He sees and discovers the world with his fingertips. Using colors, perspective, shadow, light, and balance in his pictures, Ashraf began to attract the attention of both international artists and curious scientists. So actually, in 2004, Ashraf Armegan was tested by the Harvard University scientist through his, with his brain and eye scans. So, Paano siya nakapinta? They were amazed through his fingertips po, sir. May, so, wala ba siyang ginamit na brain? The scientists, they are... 
Wala ba siyang ginamit na braille? Meron po, sir. Oh, uh, para para may ano yan, may Meron, kasi wala naman siyang yung... visual cue, 'di ba? So, at least yung feel na lang yung touch. Para pala tandaan. Yes po, fingertips po. Mm-mm. Using his fingertips, he sees and discovered the world. So, the Harvard University scientist was amazed when they when they when they saw the brain visual cortex of of a shrub that lit up whenever he touched an object and began growing. So, all in all, both Patil and, and Ashraf mm-hmm. proved to us that whatever you are, you can still appreciate arts in any ways. Yeah po. So, ang the tawag, question now ang is, tawag dyan why is art... spatial and knowledge? Because spatial knowledge doesn't yes. mean you're just going to see the object. Kung kaya mo siya kasing mahulma sa pamagitan ng sense of touch, that's why sense of touch is very important. Kasi kahit pumikit ka, malalaman mo. ba? Diba? Remember, you have games na um, yung blind box Di ba, pinapasok yung kamay nyo, tapos pinapahawakan sa inyo kung ano yon, O, tapos bahala na kayo kung ano mahawakan nyo sa loob. Pero you are predicting what's inside. Okay, so that's why sense of touch is also very important. So, isang example na tong binigay mo sa atin, Ma'am Gwen. So, hindi had lang dahil wala kang visual sight for you to create an artwork. Okay, let's proceed, Ma'am. Yes. Next slide po, sir. So the, now the question is, why art is created? Number one reason is the aesthetics. Art is created for visual appeal. Example, these platter paintings. So imagine, sa unang tingin, makukuha agad yung loob mo because wala kang maintindihan or parang magulo. Wherein, however, splatter paintings generally represents the flowing movement and express expression, emotions, and, and feelings of one artist towards his artworks. So next, the morals or ethics. Art depicting people and behaviors that are considered good and noble. Example, the attentive nurse, an oil painting by Jean Baptiste Simeon Chaden. So this painting evidently showed the style, appearances, the uniform, and common behavior of a nurse before. Next, Next slide po, sir. The spirituality. Art that enables people to connect to the spirit world or tell stories associated with religious beliefs. Example, The Last Supper by Mural by Leonardo da Vinci. So, visual arts is another way, is another way of illuminating our religious beliefs. Wherein The Last Supper mural shows the situation in which one of the apostles will betray Christ. Next, the history. Artworks that provide valuable information about important people, places, and events. Example, the Guernica by Pablo Picasso. So visual arts is also another way of telling our history. But in the Guernica painting shows the tragedies of war and the sufferings it brought to the people before. So next slide, put, sir. The another reason why art is created is because of the politics. Art used as a tool of persuasion and propaganda to convince people to adopt a certain point of view or enhance power of a ruler. Example, Napoleon in his study by Jack Louis David or in French it is pronounced as Jacques Louis David. Where in the painting, the portrait expresses that Napoleon is a correct and truthful man. And it was evidently used as a propaganda. Next slide, po, sir. Now, let's tackle the purposes of visual arts. Purposes of visual arts. First, the ceremonial. Ritual, celebration, and artworks created to support worship ceremonies. Example, the Sand Mandela is a sand artwork that is a ritual and part of the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. And, and it is believed to... To effect purification and healing. So another example is the procession during Holy Week. During the sculpted artworks of the saints, the of the Christ was are the are the highlights of every procession. So next, second is the artistic expression. Artwork to express or communicate emotions, ideas, or feelings like for self-expression to decorate or beautify objects. Example is the scream by Edward Monk on 1893. 
wherein it signifies the mental illnesses like depression or anxiety. Edward expressed the feeling of what it's like to be within the head of a depressed individual. So next is the is the narrative. Artworks that tell stories, describe and illustrate experiences, and communicate information are to, the, are to document important or historical events. Example is the White Angel Bread Line on 1933 by Dorothea Leng, or in German it is pronounced as Lenge. Wherein the, the White Angel Bread Line is one of the pictures taken from San Francisco that tells the that tells the tragic effects of the Great Depression that like the unemployment, the increasing unemployment and hunger. Another example is our photo album written from, from the day we were born to infancy to toddler and up to this age wherein it highlights the important, important events in our life. Okay, next. Fourth is the Functional. Sir, na ano po? Last wapa. Yan. Functional. Artistic, artistic objects used in everyday life like the pottery, quilts, basket, etc. So lastly, next slide po, sir. The persuasive. Artworks that promote ideas, philosophies, or products like Advertising, marketing, propaganda, ideology, etc. Example is the illustration of social distancing. So, it is compared to the chain of matches that advertises the importance of social distancing amid this adversity. So, those are the purposes of vision arts. So, now let's go to the subject of art as the actors or concept of an artwork. So first, we have the representational of objective, wherein it is, wherein it is the, it is also called as figurative art that represents objects or events in the real world, usually looking easily recognizable. It uses fro it uses form, and it is concerned with what it, with what is to be depicted in the artwork. Example: Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. That shows that evidently shows the the subject like the woman with a mysterious smile and the background is a landscape. So next po, next slide po. The non-representational or non-objective. These are those art without any reference to anything outside itself. It is non-objective because it has no recognizable objects. It is it is abstract in the sense that it doesn't represent real world real objects in our world. Example is the number one A by Jackson Pollock on 1948 that shows the emotions or expression of an artist to towards his artworks. So next po, sir. Visual arts are simply not just on art forms that create works. There's a various of categories, elements, principles, classifications meaning or essence that makes a visual art significant and unique. Therefore, there's always more to see than meet the eye. So, in which my co-discussants will discuss, will, they, will tackle the mentioned idea. So, that would be all. Thank you. Alright! Maraming salamat, ma'am. Frenzel, well said, ma'am. Okay, so I would like to add something to sinabi mo and very important yung kaninang nakita natin. That it doesn't mean that art only reflects the society, but also art can become a powerful tool that change the society. Maraming salamat ulit, ma'am Frenzel Casimiro. Well said, ma'am. And alright, ladies and gentlemen, huwag kayong aalis at marami pa tayong pag-uusapan. We'll be right back.
Alright, so nagbabalik ang yung host, Shay J. Kasentai, and thank you very much po sa ating mga discussion po regarding po dito sa ating visual arts. Okay, but anyway, I would like to check first ang ating screen kung meron pong gustong magpabate. So, try natin tingnan. So, nandito po silang lahat. Okay, so let's start here. So, okay, uh, try natin to. Thank you very much po for ano yan, uh, sa mga viewers natin na gusto magpa-shoutout. Hello, Ma'am Shin Sandagon. Okay, good morning everyone. Okay, we have Ma'am LB Calnada Palma. And we have Ma'am Maricar Oro Lumaan. Good morning. Good luck to everyone watching from bid 1A. Okay, so thank you very much for watching on the other side of this ano yan, um, courses okay, from bid 1A. Also, we have Ma'am Abigail Mendoza Buera. Good morning everyone. Good luck guys. We have Ma'am Kailin Ipomoseno. Okay. So, nagpa-mention na para makita. Baka hindi ko pa friends yung iba. Okay? So, we have Ma'am Desiree Galban Reyes. Good morning, everyone. We have Ma'am Andrea Neviro Genio. Okay? And we have Ma'am Kylie Nipomoseno. Okay? Sir Arvin J. Repala. Maraming salamat po, sir. And we have Ma'am Hazel Pura. Okay? So, Ma'am Andrea Neviro Genio ulit. And we have Ma'am Wensi Lo Rehestrado. Good morning, everyone. Ma'am Kyla Alinsub. Good luck with a heart. Okay? And we have here Ma'am Jenny Ann Villar Mora. Okay? So, sabi ni Sir Arvin, good luck everyone. Kay, kay Ma'am Medrelin Cass, good morning po. Mama Liza, very good luck everyone. Maria K. C. A. Ragos, good luck everyone with a heart. Okay, Ma'am uh, Mecca, is it Mecca? Mecca L. Moral Armea. Okay, good morning everyone. Okay, so Ma'am Nika Naris, hello there, good morning everyone. Okay, si Ma'am Amy Jane and Celia. Okay, we also have Ma'am Marisol Makawili Recto, good morning po. Okay, from B to Led 1A watching. Hey, Ma'am Nikki Aguirre ulit. Okay, uh, Sir Nico Lindon Nantes. Pa-shout out, sir. Okay, and we have Sir uh, Ma'am Jenny Sasis Sepato. Good morning, everyone. And alright, so ito po ang ating mga uh, masugid na mga manunood dito po sa ating uh, live stream ngayong umaga. So, ladies and gentlemen, okay, let me call on our next discussant. And I think uh, ready na po sila sa ating uh, next topic po regarding sa visual arts. Okay? So, may call now, Ma'am Nicole uh, Nuda. Ma'am, it's your turn na po. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Today, I am going to discuss... Next slide po, sir. Today, I am going to discuss about the categories of visual art. There are three categories of visual art. First, we have the fine arts. Then, we have the decorative arts. And finally, we have the contemporary arts. What is fine arts? Fine arts are developed primarily for aesthetics or beauty and intellectual purposes and judged for its beauty and meaningfulness, emphasizing painting, sculpture, drawing, watercolor, graphics, and architecture. So, when we say aesthetic, it is concerned with the beauty or the appreciation of beauty. Meaning to say, fine arts purpose is not only to be attractive or good looking in the eyes, but also it it is developed primarily for intellectual purposes. And these intellectual purposes can provoke or spark emotional reaction to the audiences and also generate, um, generate intellectual response such as, um, such as they convey a variety of ideas and emotions. And these emotions can be good, bad. For others, it can be shocking, disturbing, or even ugly. So as you can see, the way we perceive or interpret an art is different from each other. Some also say that, or some also view fine art as simply the paintings. These are the examples of fine art. Paintings, drawing, sculpture, film, architecture, music, poetry, photography, theater, dance, and any other artistic form that aims to convey an artist's creative vision. When we say um, creative vision, it is the idea or the message behind the photo or an art piece. For example, um, the famous painting of Vincent van Gogh, um, The Starry Night. I wasn't able to show it on the P PPT, but I'm pretty sure that almost every one of you have seen it somewhere on the internet. The way I see it, the message revolves around and articulating the inner spirituality of a man and the nature that surrounds him and this inner spirituality of van gogh and the nature that surrounds him led to a fusion of style 
and content, which is dramatic, imaginative, rhythmic, and emotional. As you can see, the canvas of um, Starry Night is um, full of imaginations and the rhythm of the painting is very um, sophisticated. Under fine arts, it is, it is also said that the perception of artistic qualities requires refined judgment, usually referred to as having a good taste. This refined judgment and good taste is what makes fine art unique, special piece of art. Because, as I've said earlier, the paintings of um, Van Gogh, Pablo Picasso, or even the Philippine national artists such as Fernando Amorsolo, their paintings, you cannot just add them to cart on social media platforms or online shopping apps such as Lazada or Shopee because the original copy of that art are often um, placed in museums and other fine art pieces are often sold in international auctions. Okay. So, later I will elaborately discuss what makes fine art unique. Yeah. But now, let us move on to the next slide uh -huh. or the next category of visual art. Which let is... me add on kay ma'am. Okay? That's why it's a sell international auction. There are biddings. In short, di siya takakaya ng presyo ng Lazada at Shopee. <laughs> Kasi mahal po ang bintahan doon. Alright, let's proceed ma'am. Next category of visual art is the decorative arts. Decorative arts is an art form that applies design and decoration to everyday objects in order to make them aesthetically pleasing. So, um, just like the fine art, decorative art's purpose is also to be aesthetically pleasing. But we can safely say that decorative art is just for beautifying the space. For example, if I want to beautify the space behind me, I would like to put a decor in here to be more pleasing to the audiences. It is also said that decorative arts is more utilitarian and have a function but retains an artistic style and still requires talent to create. Of course, every art needs an artist and that artist must have a certain talent so that an art could be created. Tama! <laughs> yes. Um, decorative art is more utilitarian. When we say utilitarian, it is designed to be useful and um, practical rather than just attractive. While fine art's purpose is to be attractive and generate this, um, generate this intellectual purpose, decorative arts, decorative art, arts on the other hand, main purpose is just to be useful decoration. Now, that's the imp the examples of decorative arts includes tapestry. Ceramics, mosaic art, glass art, jewelry, tattoo, woodwork, interior design, textile arts, and crafts. Now that we know the difference between the fine arts and decorative arts, let's dig deeper into how do we make a distinction between decorative art and fine art. Since the line between fine artworks and decorative artworks is thin, why do I say so? Because both of them can be decorative. Both of them can be put into a decoration and both of them encompass this artistry. But these two types of art are totally different in its nature. Telling a difference between a fine art piece and a mere object design can be difficult. But if you pay attention to the elements that I will be discussing, Pretty soon, you'll be able to tell the difference. First element is the originality. Decorative art is mass-produced while fine arts are unique. Um, the originality of fine arts is one of its most precious qualities that determines its value and its price. As what I've said earlier, fine arts pieces are often sold in international auctions or often preserved or... Um, in museums or national museums. While decorative art it is mass-produced, it can be produced through larger machineries, it can be also imitated. Next is the emotion. Decorative arts is just for being aesthetically pleasing or 
for decoration, while fine art sp- sparks this emotional reaction. As what I've said, it sparks this different reactions or generate these different reactions depending on the people on how they perceive the art. It can be good, bad, shocking, disturbing, and even ugly. Next is the message it sends. Decorative art's message is pretty much straightforward since its main goal is just to be aesthetically pleasing you won't find any disturbing pieces on decorative arts on the other hand fine arts have myriads of meaning what is myriads it means countless or extremely great in number so the way we perceive or interpret the meaning is different from each other um um Next element is the materials. Decorative art uses affordable, ma- affordable materials, while fine art pieces use materials that cost more. That's why fine arts are expensive. Next is the process. Decorative art process is less complicated. On the other hand, fine arts process is complex. Why complex? Because the artist, the fine artist, is willing to change or experiment the artistic process over and over and over again until they find the best way to transfer their vision into a canvas. Next, investment. Decorative art can be an investment, can be not, depending on their value, but fine arts is definitely can be an investment. Purpose. It's simple. Decorative art's main purpose is to decorate while fine art's purpose is to be admired and contemplated. If decorative art's purpose is to fit in, then fine art's purpose is to stand out and grasp the attention of the audiences. Next, now that we know the deeper context between fine art and decorative art, let's proceed to the next category and the final category of visual arts, which is the contemporary arts. It is a form of art of today, conceived in the modern times, which include photography, art print, video, animation, graffiti, and installation art. There is a difference between the art of today and the modern art, and I will discuss it on the next slide. Next slide, sir. Modern art refers to the art created from the 1880s up to the 1970s. It is more recent than the classical art periods and modern art, it is by no means current. Hindi porket um, we created an art of today, it is not considered as a modern art. Because modern arts are those art that created that are created from the 1880s up to the 1990s. On the other hand, contemporary art refers to the work of artists who are living in the 21st century. So, if you are an artist of today, you are considered an as an contemporary artist. Contemporary art aims to be thought-provoking and often depicts a broader range of social, economic, and political issues. Topics such as racism, globalization, terrorism, oppression, poverty, and feminism are common themes of the contemporary artist. Next slide, sir. These are the some of the famous contemporary artists. Jeff Koons, Yayoi Kazuma, Takashi Murakami, and any other living, working artist of today is classified as a contemporary artist. Next slide, sir. To end the discussion of the category of visual arts, I want to leave you a quote by a great spiritual writer named Thomas Merton. He said, Art enables us to find ourselves and lose ourselves at the same time. Have you ever stood up in front of a canvas and you see this emotional connection between you and the canvas? It's like you are looking at the mirror. Then Thomas Merton is right. It enables us to find ourselves. On the other hand, other artists, while they are in the process of doing their art, they kind of lose their themselves. It, it is because it is somehow because of the ideas that um overwhelming now overwhelm sila sa ideas na 
you know, I'm not an artist, so I'm I cannot. Yeah, soon you will become. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm an I am an art, <laughs> and you are an art. Okay. So, um, it has been said that the art we choose to hang in our walls is the visual representation of who we are as a person and what we believe in. So the resonance of art is deeply personal and what works for you might be opposite or might do the opposite to the other person. That's all my kaedok. I am Nicole Nuda. Thank you for listening. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, well said, ma'am. All right. So maraming salamat po sa ating uh, discussion we have Ma'am Nicole Nuda. And to add up doon sa sinabi ni Ma'am regarding po doon sa contemporary versus fine art. Sorry, sa decorative versus fine art. Let's just call this that decorative art is what we call also right now as general purpose art. This is the art that you can see everywhere. You can buy it, you can sell it, you can trade it any in what on a very very economic uh, value. Okay? So, kahit saan dyan makakita ka niyan, naka-display naka, naka, naka lang dyan sa LCC, sa, sa Hong, dyan sa ano yan. What so, uh, name it. Bahala na kayo kung anong lugar na mapuntaan nyo. Nandyan po talagang decorative arts. But, the, the matter is that, fine arts is more on passion. At kung tatanungin nyo ako personally, mas maganda talaga yung fine arts in what sense? Kasi, probably, in some cases, these are commission arts. Ngayon, If we're going to deal with the quality, I'd rather go to fine arts. Yun nga lang, fine arts is somewhat, uh, in some ways, medyo matagal gawin. Okay? There are some fine artists right now na makikita niyo on the social media. Yung nagpapa-drawing, nagpapa-pencil drawing. Have you, ano yan, um, encountered this artist right now? Okay, marami dito sa Albay. Yes, okay. Okay, we call that fine arts actually. Gamit lang yung, yung graphite ng lapis or charcoal. We call it um, fine arts because this are more on partially done and then commissioned. Because sabi ka ni ma'am, the general purpose art or decorative arts is actually mass produced. In short, kung isipin mo, dahil imagine mo ang dami, let's say, 1 million copies. <laughs> What's the real essence of that? It's for the sake of money. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, maraming salamat po sa ating discussion. Ma'am Nicole Nuda, very well said, ma'am. Okay, mga ka-eduk, huwag kayong alis, and we'll be right back. Okay, so nagpapalik kayo yung host, Shay J. Kasentay, at marami na tayong natutunan, okay, for at least 30 minutes of our discussion. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to call on the next discussion. And we have Ma'am Angelica Sabaresa, Ma. Ma'am? So oh, again, good day, everyone. So especially to those people who are watching, please allow me to introduce the panelists. For this topic, I, Angelica C. Sabaresa, will discuss two-dimensional arts followed by Ms. Aquino. So before I start with the discussion, I will be giving a short definition of two-dimensional art. So, two-dimensional art only has two measurable direction. Usually that means width and length, but no actually depth. So it classified as painting, drawing, printmaking, lithography, tattoo, photography, or picturalism, graffiti. So painting. Painting is the application of pigment to a usually flat surface. Each medium exerts a pronounced effect on the finished product. It's capable of different treatment and determines its stroke. These mediums are applied to wet plaster, canvas, wood, or paper. The tool used in brushes, I, the tool used in painting is brushes, a ruler, a painting knife, or a paint sprayer. So here are the example of the painting. So watercolor. Watercolor, a painting material made up of pigment mixed with water, which, after mixing using brushes, is applied into the paper. So, watercolor, the medium proves to be a challenge. 
Some watercolor artists are able to achieve swimming effect as you can see in the picture. Vincent van Gogh fishing boat on the beach use a bold and vibrant color. Since he is the ideal brand of a serious artist for whom quality is important. So next is fresco. A painting technique done on a wet plastered wall. It is the oldest type of painting. Once the paint is applied, it dries into plaster and become permanent. So one of the examples of fresco is the creation of an Adam painted by the Italian artist, Michelangelo. It illustrates the biblical creation narrative from the book of Genesis, in which God gives life to Adam, the first man. So next is tempera, a method of painting that employs an emulsion of water, egg yolk, or whole eggs, sometimes with a little glue, honey, or milk. So tempera, this type of paint is extremely long-lasting since the colors do not fade over time. It dries rapidly and leaves a smooth mate. So the picture, the painting is the birth of Jean, of the birth of Venus painted by Sandro Botticelli, which was most likely complete in the mid-1480s. It shows the goddess Venus coming at the shore after her birth, when she was fully grown and emerged from the water. So next is pastel, a painting medium that consists of color, pigment, and powder, and a binder a compounded with gum water. Although it is an adaptable technique, the chalk could wear off and difficult to maintain. So, in caustic, a mixed media technique that involves using heated wax or beeswax added with colored pigment. So, in caustic, it's a Greek word meaning to heat or burn in, in causticos. So, here are the portrait of Payumami from the Roman period around 140 to 150 BC. The man in the portrait, portrait is perhaps a priest. Next is all. Oil, one of the most high-priced and high-valued art painting because of the cost of its material. materials. So one of the paintings of the national artist Fernando Amorso was created in 1955, five years after the Japan invasion in 1945. It depicts how life has been for Filipino peasants for the war years. So next is acrylic, a synthetic paint mixed with acrylic emulsion binder for the surface overlaying of the artwork. So ne next is mosaic, the art of creating image with an assemblage of small pieces of colored glass stone or other material often glued on the surface with plaster or cement. So next, stained glass is a mixed media technique that involves using heat wax or this was added with colored pigment. So it is mostly used in church windows but also sometimes used formal building. Example of this is the stained glass is Biblica Minor Nostra Senora de Piet in Cagayan. So tapestry or textile is a place of fabric with image or design formed by weaving colored threads or by embroidering on canvas. So next, drawing. Drawing is done on a light colored surface like paper, wood, canvas, using pencil, pen, and ink or charcoal and usually done as a training for artists. So drawing is the most basic art form. So, example of this is pencil, pen, and ink, charcoal, and crayons. So, pencils are constructed of graphite and graded to show various degrees of hardness and softness. Pen and ink is executed with the use of black and other colored ink, India ink, Chinese ink, liners, markers, as well as a regular pen, are some of the most popular sample illustrators of comic strips and cartoons used it. Charcoal is used to create large masses of light and shadow by blending, smearing, or blurring over or other light colored surfaces. Crayon are colored stick made from protein wax mixed with pigment. It is trendy among, cho among children. Next is print 
making. It is done by creating an artist's plate which can either be original artwork or from an image which can later or transfer to a white paper using black ink. So, artists agreed with them since most people are concerned about the health danger related with the use of I, wait. Ah, ano na? Nabas ko na. <laughs> ah, ah. Ah, maliit. So, ano yan? Ah, sige. So, it's usually done for duplicating or making multiple copies of original drawing. Yep. So, example of this is the... As you can see in the picture, Manuel Antonio Rodriguez Sr., also known by his nickname, Mang Maning, was a Filipino printmaker. He was one of the pian pioneers of printmaking in the Philippines and was dubbed as the father of Philippines printmaking. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, sa ating mga viewers right now, ang sinimulan po talaga ng printmaking actually normal is not arts. Nagsimula ang printmaking po for calligraphy, letters, for communication. So in ancient China, nagsisimula na po sila doon ng printmaking patala. Yung nangyari, yung mga blocke o mga blocks ng mga letters, ipinapatayo yon, tapos inilalagay yung papel, tapos binabrush. Tapos, papatuyuin sa araw. Mass produce na siya. Pero nung lumabas po yung printmaker ni Johannes Gutenberg sa Germany, dun po nagbago yung idea ng printmaking because of machinery. Mabilisan na yung paggawa. That's why the main purpose of printmaking is for mass production. Okay, yung nakita nyo dyan kanina, nakakita na kayo neto dito sa ating anin screen. Ito yung tinatawag na tool ko, Oo, uh, nakakita na kayo niyan yung piniprint yung, for example, damit niyo puti. Ilalagay lang yon lalagay ng ano yan, nung ano, uh, pigment, tapos ibabrush lang yon Mga tatlong ano yan, kuskos, then ihang na yung papatayuin. Pero mas maganda kasi yun eh, kasi matagal masira yung, yung ano yan, print. Yung kasi ngayon sa digital art minsan, madaling ano yan, pag nalabahan medyo nawawala. O depende rin sa quality ng pagkakagawa. Okay, kasi more, more ngayon kasi, more on digital. Uh, kasi madali na lang siyang uh, gawin by computer and you can do it for uh, a couple of ano yan, times for mass production. Let's proceed, ma'am. So, I'm done already. So, Miss Acuna, please continue. All right. The... Thank you very much, Ma'am Angelica. Okay, let's proceed po sa next discussion natin. Okay, so we have Ma'am uh, Christina Acuna. Ma'am, kao na po. Has the continuation about the two-dimensional two dimensions of visual art. So, lithography, a pre-reproduction process that uses a leveled stone or metal plate, metal plate on which the positive image areas are worked by means of a greasy substance, substance so that the ink will stick to the surface. Right, the negative image areas are made ink repellent. Lithography literally means to write on stone. It came from the Greek Greek word lithos. Lithos means stone and graphene means meaning to write. It was invented in the late 18th century, initially using the limestone as the printing surface. Lithography is a printing process established on the point that grease and water do not blend. The image is smeared to a level yet grained surface using greasy medium, such as especially greasy ink, called crayon pencil, or synthetic material. Next, Next is tattoo. Tattoo is the permanent insertion of ink below the skin using a sharp instrument. Next slide. In the Philippines, the most notable traditional tattoo artist is Apu Wang Od, from Kalinga province who uses lemon stone and charcoal ink for her art. Next up. Photography or pictorialism. The art utilization and practice of creating long-lasting images by recording light or other electromagnetic radiation. Pictorialism is an approach to photography 
that emphasizes the beauty of subject matter, tonality and composition rather than that documentation of reality. Next slide. The pictorialist perspective was born in the late 19th, um, late 1860s. Kumutagan ko ito. It approached the camera as a tool that, like the paintbrush and chisel, co- could be used to make an artistic statement. So graffiti writing. Graffiti is the writing or drawings that have been scribbled, scratched, or painted illicitly on a wall or other surface, often within public view. Hindi ko na masag-explain kasi informative naman ako. Graffiti is one of the most radical contemporary art movements. Graffiti art. Graffiti art, also called street art, spray can art, subway art, or aerosol art, commonly refers to beautiful imagery applied by paint or other means to building, public transport, or other property. It can be seen anywhere po. Like po sa, um, sa DU Main po, sa tapat po ng DU Main, yung wall po dun is meron po ganito. Graffiti po. So that's all po. Thank you. Okay, good morning. So, I will be discussing the three-dimensional art with Miss Alea. So, if we have the 2D, we are also have the 3D. So, what is this 3D? Sir, can you please slide po? Thank you. So, this 3D defined through the di- dimension of height, width, and depth that occupy physical space and can be perceived from all sides and angles. So, in comparison for the two, 2D, it also... Uh, no, it is only have the height and the width. So there, sir, can you please ano pa? So we have here the types of the three-dimensional art. First, we have the sculpture. Okay, so a sculpture is a visual art that operates in three dimension. So this dimension is the height, the width, the depth in architect and sculpture. So we have here the three classification. First, we have the freestanding sculpture, or also known as the sculpture in the ground that can stand in their own or be attached on the waist for support. So the best um, example for this is the famous sculpture of Guillermo Tolentino, which is the oblation. So as what we observe, um, the sculpture can be perceived from all sides and angles with the height, width, and deep. Okay, so another one, we have the relief sculpture. So relief sculpture is, can be seen for only one vantage point that usually is straight on. So I have here the peso coin. So what you will, um, what we can observe in this peso coin? So as as what we observe, the date, the inscription, the figure are slightly raised above a flat surface. So this is one of the example of the low relief sculpture. Another one, we have the environmental sculpture. So environment, environmental is create or alters, alters the environment from the view, viewers. So it is all about the sculpture relates and the environment next for sir thank you okay so we have here the eight mediums used and sculpture first we have the stone i know that all of us are very um we all know the stone it is a hard substance formed from mineral and earth materials it is the mainly finished product of this materials is usually the dull look it is the sandstone granite basalt marble and the limestone another we have the jade so jade is a semi-precious green or white stone 
it is widely used in the country of China for an ornamental um, stone for the garden. And it, it is the most important stone in the, in the country of China as this is um, symbolized the power and the beauty. Okay, the third one, we have the ivory. So ivory is the hard white, white or cream colored substance from the tusk of animals, especially the tusk of elephants. So this ivory is very durable material that is not easily damaged or destroyed. So in short, ivory is the very durable materials for the sculpture. Another one, we have the metals. So metals is one of the favorite materials used by the sculpture. It is because of its ductility, conductivity, and luster. So in short po, metals as a medium or materials in sculpture is very flexible. It is easy to bend. Another, we have the plaster. So plaster is a mix, mixture of lime, water, sand, and cement. It is used for making the mannequins, models, mold, and other indoor sculpture. This, um, the plaster is not a strong materials as ivory, and it may also require required a hiding framework to support the um, the sculpture. Okay, so we have in the clay. Okay, clay is an earthy material that consists primarily of hydrated aluminum silicates. So this is used for the um, pottery, ceramics, sculpture, tiles, and bricks. Another, we have the glass. So glass is a hard, brittle, transparent, and translucent substance. So the glass can be um, can be formed into the various colors and shape under the extreme heat. Okay, so lastly, we have the wood. So this is the most comfortable to carve than any other medium. So this is used by or made from the dap dap, mahogany, and nara. Okay, so let's come now from the architecture. So architecture is the art and technique of designing and building as distinguished from the skills associated with construction. This is the sculptural techniques by an architect or the sculpture in the design of the project. So in architecture, the sculpture must be um, skilled in designing the the architecture so we have here the materials used in architecture so it is the stone the brick the wood the concrete iron and steel so i know you are very this um these materials are very common in you so we have now from the ultimate synthesis the ultimate synthesis on architecture as the venostas or the beauty venostas is the aesthetic quality associated with the goddess venus so it is so an architecture is not all about the beauty it is also have the utility or the utilitas the utility is to provide an efficient arrangement of space and mechanical and mechanical system to meet the functional needs of its occupants. And lastly, and last synthesis is the firmitas. This is the fairness and the fairness to secure the building's structural integrity. So the architect will be will have the ultimate synthesis of venustas, utilitas, and Permitas. Alangan naman pong mayroon siyang beauty, maganda yung pagka-associate niya ng proportion style, eh hindi naman siya, um, hindi naman siya matatag. Ang so, <laughs> Parang useless lang yun. <laughs> Ang pao. Parang isang bag, isang lindo lang, wala na. That's po yung pinaka-importante. Sila po yung pinaka-importante, yung tatlo pong yan. Okay po, sir, next po. 
Okay, so let na this is the characteristic that distinguish a work of architecture from other built structure. First, we have the suitability of the work to be used by human beings, the stability and permanence of the work's construction, the communication of experience, aesthetic, and ideas through its form. So all of these conditions must be met and agree in architecture. Sorry. So next po, sir. Okay, so let them know the sculpture versus architecture. So, architecture involves the study of engineering and engineering mathematics. A sculpture involves creativity and imagination. It does not depend on measure measurement. On other hand, architecture easily depends on measurement. A sculpture and architecture um. Both needs um, the, skill, the skill from the sculpture and the architect. So we have now from the ceramic art. So ceramic art made from the ceramic materials including clay. Ceramics derived from the keramos which is the Greek for potter's clay. It is refers to items made from clay bodies and fixed and the kiln. So, in visual art, for short, there is no difference between the ceramic and the pottery. They are... Okay. Yes, po, sir. So, there is... There are denoted by the four basic steps in creative process. So, first, we have the... First, we have the for me. Kaya pa niya. Nababasa mo po. Malabo po, sir. Sorry. Ah, okay, so basahin ko na lang. So first is forming. Okay, that's actually uh, the shaping. Huh? Then firing, yes, baking. Yan. Decora uh, yan. Decorating. Decorating. Coating then the refiring. object with a glaze or applying mm -hmm. to it. Um, decorative technique and Last is the preparing or the rebaking to harden the glaze. So this is the this basic um, process is very essential for the ceramic arts for um, for the um, result or para sa maayos at maganda niyang resulta. Okay. So that's all, po, sir, for me. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, ma'am. And let's proceed na po sa natin next discussant. We have Ma'am Alia Jane Salire. Ma'am, kau na po. Naka-off ba mic mo? <laughs> oh, sige na. Excited. Oh, sige. Oh, go, ma'am. <laughs> so, good morning, everyone. I am Alia Jane Salire, and I am dis I will be discussing about animation, jewelry, and installation arts. So, animation is a technique in which images are manipulated to appear as moving forms. Animated films are ones in which individual drawings Paintings or illustrations are photographed frame by frame or also called the stop frame cinematography. So animation emerged in the 19th century and became the most influential um, media in the 20th century and beyond. This is an umbrella term for the whole field of moving imagery. So next slide, please. Movie production or filmmaking. Movie production or filmmaking is the process of making a film generally in the sense of films intended for extensive theatrical exhibition. Motion picture, also called film or movie, are series of still photographs on film projected in rapid succession onto a screen by means of light. So the illusion of actual smooth and continuous um, movement is caused by the optical phenomenon called the... Uh, um, persistence of vision. So, cine cinematography is the art of visual storytelling, and film is a visual medium, and the best shot films are ones where you can tell what's going on without hearing any of the dialogue. Uh, so, the difference okay. between cinematography and filmmaking is that cinematography focuses more on the camera positioning, the lighting, or, or the... Um, the um, 
on, on the other words, they are called, um, or they handle the camera that each shot must um, fit the vision of the filmmaker. While the filmmaker are the persons who are, for example, the director and the producers. They are the ones who make the film from the start to the ending. Next slide, please. So another type of three-dimensional art is the jewelry. Jewelry is a decorative decorative objects worn on clothes or body that are usually made from valuable metals such as gold and silver and precious stones. These are objects of personal adornment prized for the craftsmanship going into their creation and generally for the value of their components as well. So over the last few hundred years, jewelry symbolizes um, wealth and the social rank of the people. So, um, in today, in today's generation, the the jewelers um, use this three D printing in making the jewelries because this allows them to conceptualize and prototype rings quickly. So the difference of the function of the jewelry before and now is that jewelry before are used to symbolize wealth, social rank, and the status. And also, these are used to avert from evil mm. and um, it, what the, it attracts good luck. Well, today, um, people place less emphasis on its in intrinsic value. Rather, they put um, emphasis on its aesthetic function. Kumbaga, pampaganda na lang. If you can't afford having gold, then you can have um, bronze. Or mm. if you can't afford having a silver, you can have the stainless steel. Yeah, you can so also like use that for investment, right? It's I, yeah. For me, I'd rather invest for uh, golds and silvers because, you know, gold is always appreciating. Hindi mo mababa ang value niyan. Kaya kung may nakita kayo dyan ng tao ng daming alahas, actually, that's not actually for the sake na uh, artistic siya o pinaibag niya sa gamit niya. But in some cases, since it's also uh, doing the abrupt changes in the prices, di ba? Palagi yan nag appreciate So, yun, pag bumili ka ngayon, malay mo, after one year, tumaas yung presyo. It's kind of a form of investment, of course. Let's proceed, ma'am. So, next slide po. So, the last type is the installation art. It is an art artistic genre that involves the configuration or installation of objects in a space, such as a room or warehouse. This is also described as environments often occupy an entire room or gallery space that the spectator has to walk through in order to engage fully with the work of art. So these are uh, installation art are often designed for a specific period of time and place. For example, um, the, inst the, um, the umbrella installation in the Bolangi General Comprehensive High School. When mm. it's summertime, you can see that they are putting um, umbrella installation and also in the Punta Almara, the light installation there because when it's already in the nighttime, of course, it's very dark. So that they have this, um, they have this idea of putting um, lights, which is makes it in a way that it is decorative. So that is why installation art is also considered under the element of decorative art. Okay. So that's all. Thank you very much, Mom Alia. And let's proceed na po sa ating uh, next discussion. So, ladies and gentlemen, pumunta na po tayo sa elements of art. So, ito na po yung mga tatandaan natin pag tayo po ay magkikritik ng isang artwork. So, let's proceed na po. And we have Ma'am Edgley Medina. Ma'am, it's your turn na po. Hello, good morning. Hello po mga ka and also to our viewers. And I am Edgley J. Medina and I will tackle about the elements of art. Next slide, please. So, the elements of art consist of line, shape, form, space, value, color, and texture. Now, let's discuss them one by one. Next slide, please. According to Vincent van Gogh, great things are done by a series of small things brought together. Just like elements of art, which are the building blocks used 
used by artists to create a work of art. So remember, um, elements of art are the building blocks. Now let's jump into the discussion. So we have here the first one, line. Next slide. Oh. So a line is the most basic element of art and without line, the other elements couldn't exist. So let's start here and then we will gradually go more advanced. A line can be a thought of as a moving dot. If the dots overlap, it's a solid line. And if they don't, it's a dotted line. A line has a beginning and an end and by its existence, it's create, it creates an edge. If a line joins up, it forms an outline and also called a contour. An outline creates a shape. So in simple words, line is an element of art illustrated by a point moving in space. It may be two or three dimensional, descriptive, descriptive implied or abstract. So next slide, here are, here are the types of lines. So as you can see, it has vertical, horizontal, zigzag, curve, spiral, curly, shape, dot, broken, diagonal, wavy, and cross hatching. So for the next slide, as you can see, here are other examples. Yan. Another is zigzag, diagonal, horizontal, vertical, imaginary, and three-dimensional. So take a, take a look at these pictures. You can see the lines over here. Maybe visualize nyo siya. So when we say descriptive lines, as I mentioned a while ago, these are the lines that the object shape, form, or detail. The main types are outlines, and it is an outline that surrounds a shape. While the contour lines, contours define the outer edges of a shape and any details inside like creases or folds. There are many types of lines. Ayun na nga, yung pinakita ko po sa inyo earlier. So, lines are basic tools for artists, though some artists show their lines more than others. Next slide, let's proceed to shape. So, when a line meets up to enclose a space, a shape is formed. Shapes can be either two-dimensional. Example, they have height and width but no depth. For example, a square. The best way to remember the shape element is to think of an outline. So, the elements is like a process to create a masterpiece. You cannot create a masterpiece or an art without them. So, we need to, uh, no, uh, we need to um, understand and keep in mind the different elements of art. So the next slides, shapes can also be geometric and organic shape. As you can see, geometric, here at the left side, while the organic shape, for example, um, when you've been into um, digital arts, um, for, from experience, there's a tool there called lasso tool. It can it can create an organic shape based from your likes. Yep. Then next here the positive or negative shapes. For the next slide, we have the element named form. Form is the next step from shape as we now add depth to it to create a three-dimensional form. So unlike earlier in shape that is two-dimensional and flat, form is a three-dimensional and encloses a volume which includes height, weight, and also a depth. For the next slide, we have here an example, the shape and form. So form encloses a volume. Yon, as I said, I as I have said earlier, the height, width, as well as the depth. Like shapes, forms can be geometric or organic too. Sorry. Next, we have space. 
In space, space what lies between, around, or within an object. To show space in a two-dimensional medium, the artist must use techniques to create the illusion of space between items that are in reality on a flat surface. For the next, so that you can visualize more, here are some examples of an images or artworks that consist of the space. For example, the overlapping, color and value, as you can see, positive and negative are defined or a sense of depth to achieve in the work of art. Negative space is all around the object, which is the positive space subject of the painting or drawing. It also consists of overlapping or overlap, size, color and value, placement, detail, and a linear perspective. So if we'll tackle them one by one, Overlapping is when an object is drawn or painted on top of another object. The viewer's eye interprets this as one object being in front or another implying. Kung baga, yung space niya, na-imagine natin siya na nag-overlap yung, yung um, subject na ini-interpret natin. Next, the placement. Objects higher up in the picture plane will seem to the viewer's eye to be further away than object placed low down in the picture frame. For the size, smaller objects look as if they are further away than larger objects. Notice how smaller, how smaller the house in relation to the flowers, if you imagine. Next, the detail. The further away an object, the less detail is visible to the viewer. By purposely reducing the amount of detail in an object, it will appear further away than an object with greater detail. We can also comprehend or um, um, this to photography because um, when we see an object, the focus is in the object, in its object, and um, the background will be blurred. Next, uh -huh. for the color and vol. Next, for the color and volume, um, as you can see, objects in the distance usually appear cooler, which is um, we may say bluer and lighter and color. In color, close-up objects appear warmer and darker in value. For the perspective, um, the example here is the linear perspective. It can also be used to create the feeling of depth on a two-dimensional surface. The most commonly used perspective, perspective types are liner and two-point perspective. All right, let's move on to the next slide. The next element is value. When we say value, it is how light or dark something is. It can be from light to dark or dark to light. There is a scale of light and dark from pure white through a pitch black. The value of color depends on how light or dark it is compared to the value scale. So value is what makes it possible to show three-dimensional forms in a two-dimensional surface. By increasing differences in volume, contrast is in increased as well. A highlight will look brighter when surrounded by a dark volume. Decreasing contrast will make objects visually recede into the picture plane and draw less attention. The focal point of a painting is where you want to add the most contrast as this high contrast automatically draws the viewer's eyes. So if a painting is done on the lower or darker edge of the value scale, it is called a low-key painting. When we say low-key paintings, it gives rise to a heavy, mysterious, dramatic, and sometimes brooding feeling in the viewer. By contrast, high-key paintings takes their range of values from the upper end of the value scale and create emotion of lightness, weakness, spirituality, and etc. So we can depict um, thoughts from it. Next, the color. When we say color, it is created when light is reflected into the viewer's eye. In art, colors are arranged on a color wheel. 
please refer to the picture shown. The color wheel was developed by Isaac Newton who took the color spectrum and bent it into a circle. The color wheel shows primary colors, the colors that can, that, that can be mixed. Next, the secondary colors made by mixing two or image, images. And tertiary colors made by mixing primarily and secondary color. It has three characteristics, namely U, Value, and Intensity, where U is the name of the color, Value is also connected to color in use lightness or darkness alongside with Intensity, that is the degree of brightness and purity. Next, let's move on to the element of text, the texture. When we say texture, actual texture is the way an object feels to touch and a drawing or painting texture on a two-dimensional. What surface is a challenge for artists? The artist must instead convey the illusion of the actual texture to the viewer on the flat surface. So how is this done? But how is this done by careful use of value? Are and specific marks, brush strokes, which then mimic the actual texture. So every textured surface reflects light in every particular way. Texture may be rough, smooth, hard, implied, repeating, and many more. So for the next, I guess I already tackled the seven elements, but before I end my discussion, have you ever wondered? Next slide, na po sir. Then na po sa last. Have you ever wondered Ikaw ba yan? why? <laughs> yeah, wait lang po. Ha po. <laughs> ah, sige. <laughs> have you um if nakinig kayo, have you ever wondered by any chance why elements of art are important? So for me. The elements of art are important for several reasons. Um, and a person can create art without utilizing at least a few of them. So, uh, I will make my discussion memorable by sharing to you my sample of drawing. So, as you can see, before we proceed to the um, traditional, you can see here a picture it's actually a, a digital art made by yours truly. And this, <laughs> and this type of art is called a Vexel art. Uh -oh. So, I have made this art because of pandemic. Sa tagal ba naman ang pandemic, syempre mabubor tayo. Mm -hmm. And at first, I would like to share this experience because at first, I would like to draw a portrait using a paper but I have no material since I cannot go out because of lockdown so I downloaded an app where I can also draw portraits and creative creative arts like this so what I'm trying to say is that it is also related to my topic because I cannot cannot create a masterpiece without the seven elements of art and for example, I have here a portrait. Yeah, ang galing. Ayan, may sample si ma'am. Diba susunod, dapat may sample din yung mga discussant natin, diba? Alright, sige ma'am. Ano yan? <laughs> I have here a portrait. Uh, my reference is Billie Eilish. And yeah. I, for the, um, the mediums I have used is um, R. Graphite, charcoal, and pencil blending stamps, and a volume board. So, as I have said earlier, I cannot make this kind of arts or portrait because the elements of art are the building blocks, and it also consists of shape, line, texture, volume, and color. So we must be very careful when creating an art. Although art is an expressive way of making to feel as something, 
and I can say that art is not always um it is not supposed to be that neat or pleasing to eyes because we can express ourselves but we can also learn from visual arts regarding matter in terms of improving ourselves and raising awareness about the visual art. So that's it. I hope you have learned something and thank you. All right, thank you very much Ma'am Edgley. Yan may pa bonus pa si Ma'am, meron pang sample. Okay? Well then Ma'am, so meron ka pang aniyan, ang uh, bonus para sa amin. All right? So ladies and gentlemen, maraming salamat po ulit Ma'am Medina. And let's proceed na po sa next nating discussion. And we have Ma'am Julian Christer Listang ka, ma'am. Kau na po. As discussed earlier, if elements of art are your tools, the principles of art are how you put them to work. It is where the style of art manipulates its substance. My name is Julian Christer Listang ka, and I am going to talk about the seven basic principles of art. Next po. There is science behind every art and every science has some principles. Hence, art also has many principles. There are seven basic principles of visual art, namely, balance, proportion, emphasis, variety, movement, rhythm, and harmony. These seven are used to organize the basic elements of art, which is line, shape, form, value, color, space, and texture. And they are also sometimes referred to as principles of organization or design principles. Now, let's talk about the first principle. Balance refers to the use of artistic elements such as line, texture, color, and form in the creation of artworks in a way that renders visual stability. For example, is Jan Van Eyck's Gent Altarpiece in 1390 and 1441. This is just one panel from his creation. And it shows a great example of balance, which is very pleasing to the eyes and very stable. Balance, when observed in general terms, refers to the equilibrium of different elements. However, in art and design, balance does not necessarily imply a complete visual or even physical equilibrium of forms around a center of composition, but rather an arrangement of form that evokes a sense of balance in the viewers. Now, there are three different types of balance. Symmetrical, asymmetrical, and radial. First, symmetrical balance is when one image is mirrored on the other side to repeat itself. It is also known as formal balance. And as you can see in the example in the picture shown, Leonardo da Vinci's mural painting, The Last Supper, is an example of a work of art where the center of the mural is occupied by the figure of Christ while his disciples are symmetrically arranged on both his sides in the composition. Now, let's talk about the asymmetrical balance. It is when different types of elements create a visual balance, balance and in contrast to symmetrical balance which can render works to be too rigid, formulaic, and insipid, a symmetrical balance is also known as informal balance. It offers greater expressive and imaginative freedom to the artist. An example is the Otagawa Hiroshige Man on Horseback Crossing a Bridge from the series The 69th Station of the Kisokaido 1834-1842. The print can be taken as an illustration of this principle. As you can see, there is a huge tree that outweighs the other part of the print where only empty space and shadows of bridge and mountains are shown. But... Nonetheless, the print as a whole is a dynamic and successful artwork. Now, let's go to the last type of balance. 
Rachel Balance. The distribution of elements around a central point in all directions. In contrast to a symmetrical and symmetrical balance, radial balance is arranged around the center of composition, radiating from it like the rays of sun, hence the term radial. An example is the mandala of Amiteus in the 19th century Tibetan school south. Radial balance creates a sense of order and harmony in the mandala shown. Although different colors and details are shown, the geometric shapes grouped around the central point create an arrangement that looks perfectly balanced. Now let's go to the second principle which is proportion. The ratio of one art element to another it is important to keep in mind the relationship between different elements of the composition so that the scale of your artwork always makes visual sense. For example, the picture shows a basketball and a baseball, both which are different in scale but shares the same in proportion. Proportion does not refer to overall size but rather the relationship of the sizes of two or more subjects or elements. Now, to the third principle. The image of one lone pier among a ball of red apples demonstrate the principles of emphasis. Why? Because emphasis is when an element of an artwork stands out more than the other. This creates a sense of, sense of importance and is intentionally used to communicate a message or feeling. Emphasis creates variety in an artwork. Now to the fourth principle which is variety. This image of different fruits and vegetables is an example of variety. It is counterweight to harmony and creates visual interest by slightly changing or using different elements together in a composition. It can be created with contrast, change, elaboration, or diversifying elements. With variety, it is important to consider how the elements are working together so that you still have harmony and unity within a composition. Now to the fifth principle, which is movement. The visual flow of your artwork, it's the path that you intend your viewer's eyes to follow. It is created by purposely placing art elements in a way that creates this path. Uh, example is optical art. Optical art shows, um, uh, optical art are abstract and with many better known pieces created in black and white, like the example shown, they typically give the viewers the impression of movement, hidden images, flashing and vibrating patterns, or of swelling or warping. As you can see, as you focus on the optical art, your eyes cannot be in one place you you can see as if the picture is actually moving, moving. even though it is not all right now to the sixth principle rhythm indicates movement created by the carefully placement of repeated elements in a work of art to cause a visual tempo or beat the example shown as you can see is a rhythm principle which is usually achieved through repetition of lines, shapes, colors, and more. And this creates a visual tempo in an artwork and provides a path for the viewer's eyes to follow. Now, to the last principle, which is harmony. Harmony is a way of combining similar elements in an artwork to accent their similarities achieved through use of repetition and subtle gradual changes. In, as you can see in the example, Claude Monet's The Japanese Bridge, The Water Lily Pond in 1899, his 
painting demonstrate harmony in color with mostly greens and blues used. This is known as analogous color scheme. Now, all of these principles demonstrate how they tie in one another to create a piece of art. Again, the principles of art are the guidelines or the organizing factors in the visual arts that help artists to create, design, and control how viewers likely react to art images and objects. That is all for my discussion. Thank you very much. Alright, so thank you very much, Ma'am Julian Listanko. Yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, okay? So meron kasi talagang mga artist no, na sinusunod yung mga principles and elements, di ba? Most of the artists, most renowned artists actually follows all of those principles and elements. Kasi this is actually one of the forms of fine classical arts, di ba? Pero may mga artists kasi minsan na hindi sumusunod yan. They're more on these experimental arts, okay? Kaya yung, yung lumalabas, experimental din, kakaiba, okay? But for the sake of classical arts, for fine arts, you need to follow those principles and elements. So let's proceed po. Thank you very much ulit, ma'am. And let's proceed po sa ating next discussion. And we have ma'am Krisha again. So ma'am, kao na po. Good morning everyone and to our viewers. Thank you for watching and this report is prepared by me and Miss Angie Dalma and entitled with The Development of Visual Arts in the Philippines. But before that, let me just introduce to you some of the most notable visual arts and artists in abro abroad. So first is Vincent van Gogh, one of the world's greatest artists with paintings such as The Star Night and Sunflowers. We all know that Va Vincent van Gogh is famous of these paintings and his pa paintings are, are known as Impressionism. So what is Impressionism painting? So Impressionism are... When you see an Impressionism painting, the artists were not exact about the painting, a realistic picture. It means that they use many short brush strokes in applying paint thickly. Because of short strokes, if you, start, if you stare closely to an impressionist painting, they will look like a bunch of paint blobs. And, but when you back away, you can see the whole picture. That is an impression, impressionism painting. So let's, ba let's go back to Vincent van Gogh. Vincent van Gogh was a post-impressionist painter whose work notable for its beauty, emotion, and color, highly influenced during 20th century art. So this Star Night painting, Van Gogh painted the Star Night during it, his 12-month stay at the asylum. So Van Gogh suffered in anxiety also when he painted this painting. Several months after suffering, suffering a breakdown in which he severed a part of his own ear with a razor. So next, next slide please, sir. We have Leonardo da Vinci. Or his, his real name is Leonardo di Ser Pilero da Vinci. He was a painter, architect, inventor, and student of all things scientific. Today he remains best known for his art including two paintings that remain among the world's most famous and admired, Mona Lisa and The Last Supper. He didn't receive a formal education. So, si Leonardo da Vinci pala ay hindi nakatanggap ng formal education. So, he just improved his own skills in learning science and even in art. So, this is his work, The Last Supper, in 1495 to 1498. All four Gospels give an account of the Last Supper in the Bible. At this gathering, Jesus Christ shared his final meal with the disciple on the night before he was arrested. So the third, we have Pablo, Pablo Picasso. So he was the father of Cubism. If you know Cubism, Cubism is an art from the word Cubism, the cube, and the many shapes of of. That is, that is in that painting. So he created the art movement known as Cubism. 
Cubism. He is the father of Cubism. Pablo Picasso was a Spanish painter, sculptor, printmaker, ceramic, ceramicist, and stage designer. One of the most greatest artists of all time. So his work of art is entitled with Guernica, 1937. Guernica is also one of the world's most famous and moving anti-war statements. So, you know, art can become a voice to our society, just like what our what what they said earlier that art can become a powerful weapon for our society. So, art be- will will become our, our voice to to bring bring our own own perspectives in our society. So, it was inspired by the brutal 1987 bombing of the Basque city of Guernica during the Spanish Civil War. So he was famous for this painting because he painted this for the anti-war statement. So next we have Rembrandt van Rijn was a Dutch artist active in the 17th century a perlode known as the Dutch Golden Age. He is renowned as the master of the light and shadow. He is the master of the light and shadow. As you can observe in his paintings, the shadow and the light, they are all balanced. His painting is entitled The Night Watch, 1642. Rembrandt's largest and most famous paintings was made for one of the three headquarters of the Amsterdam Civic Guard. So the next is Claude Monet. He is the founder of French... French Impressionist painting. So like what I've said earlier, the Impressionism painting is like this. Just the painting has a short brush strokes. That is why if you get near to the painting, you can clearly see. But when you back away, you can clearly see the whole picture. So Claude Monet was a famous French artist of the 19th century. His work of art is entitled with Woman with the Parasol. Parasol. Monet painted two people very dear to him. It is his wife and his chil- his ch- children, uh, his child, her, her his eight-year-old son, Jean. Rather than paint a portrait of his family in typical portrait pose, Monet chose to depict them during a stroll. So the next is Georgia O. Kiev. O'Keeffe has been called the mother of American modernism. She is best known for her large format paintings of natural subjects, especially flowers, bones, and New York's skyscrapers. So her work is entitled with Jimson with White Flower. To her, the delicate bloom stood as some of the most overlooked pieces of naturally occurring beauty objects that the the bustling contemporary world ignored. So she said that her painting is inspired. When you take a flower in your hand and really look at it, it's your world for the moment. She wants to give the world to someone else. Most of people rush around so they have no time to look at the flower. So this painting is like the flower's bob towards the person. So that's the meaning of that painting. Okay. And the next one is Elizabeth Louise Vigée Lebrun. So she was also known as Madame Lebrun, was a French portraitist, just like Edgeli earlier when she she let us see saw her, see her portrait. She was also known for her portraits of Marie Antoinette, whose portraits whose portrait she painted thirty times. Her ability to depict her subjects in a flattering, elegant style made her one of the most popular portraits in France. So her portraits is classical and more on very elite. So we go now to our main topic, the paintings in the Philippines. So this is the development of our visual art in, here in our country, the Philippines. So we go now to pre-Spanish colonial period. Bago dumating ang mga Espanyol. Ito ang mga arts na mga Pilipino noon. So let me 
let me introduce to you the Munungul jar. So early Filipino painting can be found in a red slip clay mixed with water. This designs embellished on the ritual pottery. So this has a religious belief that some Filipinos believe that when you pass away, your ash is being retained in that jar and some so our our ancestors believe that if you if you put that jar in your house your loved ones will always be there so that's what they believed in in that jar so the next one is the pintados so we are we are familiar with with apu wang ud she is well known for her for her tattoo tattoos and he is known as the last Mambabatok. She is from the tribe of Butbut in Bulacan, Kalinga. So Pintados painting is also manifested in the tattoo tradition of early Filipinos referred to as Pintados or the painted people of Visayas. So this is our tradition here in Philippines. The next one is Sarimanok. Maranao is well known for the Niaga dragons and the Sarimanok carved and painted in the beautiful panolong of their Torogan or king's house. So I I want to introduce to you that this Niaga dragons is like a myth. Like the the Bakunawa. If you are familiar of this myth, mm. the Bakunawa is a serpent-like dragon in Philippine myth mythology. Mm. It is believed to be the cause of eclipse, earthquakes, rains and wind so if you remember the last miss universe uh miss universe philippines presented this kind of mythological mm -hmm. costume in that in that competition so be familiar with it okay it's bakonawa or niaga dragons so the next is the sari manok it is carved and painted in the beautiful panolong and it was a Maranao art. It is said to be a symbol of good fortune. So if you have that in your house, they believe that you you will going you're going to have a very very high cash flow. <laughs> yeah, prosperous and <laughs> yeah, living. Prosperous uh -huh. living and pr prosperous se se season. That's what our ancestors believe in in very very late days. So next we have the Spanish colonial period. So, nakarating na ang mga Espanyol dito sa Pilipinas. And together with Ferdinand, Ferdinand Magellan and his Portuguese navigator, they arrived in the Philippines. So, span in this sp Spanish colonial period, artist art artistic paintings were introduced to the Filipinos in the 16th century. Spaniards used paintings as religions propagandas to spread Catholicism throughout the Philippines. So this is their agenda, to spread the Catholicism through these paintings, through the art. If you can observe some of the churches, ancient churches in here in the Philippines, they have so many painted walls, and these walls are, are, often, are often painted with the Holy Family, which includes Mama Mary, the Jesus, Jesus Christ, and and the and Joseph, as you can observe. So Spaniards use paintings as religious propaganda to spread Catholicism throughout the country. Images of the Holy Family and saints were introduced in the Filipin Filipino sites through carved santos. So meron na talagang mga mga carved santos noon noon noon, noon pa. At ang Spaniards ang nagdala dito ng, ng religion natin. That is why majority of our, of, of our of Filipino people is Catholic and has, and has the tradition of Catholicism. So the, next, we have the Spanish colonial period again. Filipinos began creating paintings in the European tradition during the 17th century Spanish period. In this country, in this century, Art is produced a mixture, a mixture of religious, political, and landscape artworks 
with qualities of sweetness, dark, and light. So in this, the Spanish friars introduced Western painting in the Philippines. So portraits of saints of the Holy Family became a familiar sight into the churches. Other subject matters include the Passion of Christ, the Via Crucis, the Crucifixion, Portrayal of Heaven, Purgatory, and Hell. Painters from Visayas Island of Bohol were noted for their skillful artists. So we, noon noon pa meron na talaga tayong mga, mga skillful na mga artists na talagang kilala noon nung nasa Spanish period pa lang tayo, Spanish colonial period. They are being introduced to Western countries but they are not well known because hindi nga, hindi, ang sabi, eh, hindi nila nilalagyan ng signature yung mga paintings nila. Mm-hmm. They are just competing to the Western Western nations to 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 let them see their art, their own art. So, oh, okay. So, next, we have here the post-Spanish colonial period. This is modern na. The art of Juan Luna and Felix Hidalgo showed a trend for political statement. So, lahat ng, mga, lahat ng kanilang mga arts, it shows a political statement. Because we, we, know, we all know that we are, we are being colonized by the Spanish, by the, by the Spaniards, and we are colonized by 333 years. Ganon katagal. That is why our... our our inspirants Juan Luna and Felix Hidalgo think of a way to to become a voice through their skills through their paintings so they they created these paintings Damian Domingo is remembered as the first Pil- Filipino painter to specialize uh, in secular or non-religious painting he had a photographic memory and is well known as the creator of miniature portraits of Manila society figures. So, the art of Juan Luna and Felix Hidalgo are the first Filipino painters to gain international recognition. So, what I've, what I've said earlier, they they are being they are being introduced to Western painting. They they won the top prizes at the national exposition of the art in the Madrid in 1884. So we have the res- representative in the world of arts. It is Juan Luna and Felix Hidalgo. And their works are remarkable paintings. They have the best works of art. And even now, they are introduced to museums and they are, they are being auctioned with high price because they are very, very, very important to know that this the, the art of Philippines is also meron ding ibubuga mm-hmm. so that is the end of my discussion but before that Amor Solo is best known for her illuminated landscapes which often portray traditional Filipino costumes culture, fiestas and o- o- occupations so the father of our Philippine arts is don't forget this it is Guillermo Tolentino. He is the father of our art. So that's all. Thank you. And I hope you enjoyed the discussion. Alright. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay, well said. So nandun na po yung mga examples. Hindi na kayo kailangan pang magtangon, uh, magtanong. So sa mga viewers natin, just going to uh, review this video, okay? Uh, para makita nyo ulit yung mga uh, details, okay? Lalong-lalo yung mga paintings and one of the most important uh, features ng topic na ito, okay? Those are the samples, alright? Thank you very much ulit. Um, ma'am? Okay, Krisha Agwensa, okay? Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay, let's proceed po. And we have Ma'am Christine Acuna. Ma'am, ikaw na po. Um, sir, it should be Ako niya already finished her report po. Ah, okay. Sino na, ma'am? Angie Dalma. Si ma'am Dalma na? Ako. Okay. Parang nawawala si ma'am. ba si ma'am? Ako. Ah, okay. So, ah, may umalis na isa. Oo, kaya pala ganun. Okay. Ah, sige. Ikaw na, ma'am. Okay. okay, so 
Hi again mga kaiduk. Once again, I am Angie Katrina Sdama from the Set English One and I'm going to discuss the development of sculpture in the Philippines. So, the Philippine sculpture have undergone changes in terms of shape, form, content, as well as the medium used. The first sculptures were primitive and the native materials used are stones and clays. During that time, sculptures that were created depicted normal lives and acts of worships and colors were also limited. So the Filipino sculptures came to, the, to be known in the middle of 19th century. So let me introduce to you two gentlemen who paved the way and became the foundation of sculpture in the Philippines. So first we have Guillermo Tolentino. Guillermo Tolentino was named as the father of Philippine arts. One of, one of his major artworks is the Bonifacio Monument that was built on November 30, 1933. It was located in Caloacan to commemorate the founder and supremo of the Katipunan, that Andres Bonifacio. So, Tolentino was named as the National Artist of the Philippines for Sculpture in 1973, three years before his death. Now, let us proceed to Napoleon Agueva. So, Napoleon Agueva is the father of modern Philippine sculpture. When he was 46 years old, Agueva was proclaimed as the national artist for sculpture in 1976, making him the youngest awardee for national artist. One of his most famous masterpieces was the sculpture of Siam Nadiwata Anang Sining or the Nine Muses of Arts in 1991. It was located at the branch of Bulwagang Rizal in UP Diliman. So the nine muses represents the nine arts, which are the architecture, music, painting, sculpture, literature, dance, painting, cinematography, and computer arts. Now let me show you some of the most famous sculptures in the Philippines. So first we have the Rizal Monument that was inaugurated in December 30, 1913. It was designed by Richard Kisling and is located in, in Luneta to commemorate our national hero, Gata Cerezal. Next, we have again the, Mon the Bonifacio Monument that, as I've tackled earlier, symbolizes the Filipino cry for freedom. Next, we have the Palangiga Encounter Monument. It was designed by none other than Napoleon Abueva and was built in September 28, 2003. It was built to commemorate the bravery of the townspeople who initiate an attack led by Valeriano Abanador against the U.S. soldiers where they were able to kill 54 American soldiers with just the use of bolo. It was the biggest defeat of the foreign troops during the Philippine-American War. Next, we have the People Power Monument. The People Power Monument was designed by Eduardo Castillo in 1993. It was built in the corner of Epifanio de los Santos Avenue or EDSA in Quezon City to commemorate the, the events that had happened in the 1986 People Power Revolution. The next one was the Lapu-Lapu Shrine. It was located in Lapu-Lapu City, Cebu. It was built in order to commemorate the courage and bravery of the native chieftain Lapu-Lapu who defeated Magellan in the 1522. So one of the most famous touch of Lapu-Lapu was called the Sentinel of Freedom and it was designed by the national artist Juan Sadid Imau in 2004. Now, let's proceed to the Now let's proceed to the visual art, Filipino visual artists in the Philippines and their artworks. So first we have Okay, so I'm so sorry. First we have Damian Domingo. So Damian Domingo was a Chinese Filipino mestizo who became the father of Filipino painting. And also he is the first one to paint a self-portrait. He painted himself to look more Espanol than his Some of his most famous artworks 
Campus de la Sagrada Familia, la Catedra de San Pedro, and the La Immaculada Concepcion. Next, we have Juan Luna. So Juan Luna was a Filipino painter, sculptor, and politician activist who became one of the first recognized Philippine artists and he was the one who painted the most popular one of the most popular painting entitled Spoliario. So this painting of his earned a gold medal in 1840. The depiction of the Roman cruelty in the painting has been interpreted as an allegory for the state of the Philippines under the Spanish rule. So some of the artworks of Juan Luna was the Death of Cleopatra, The Blood Compact, España y Filipina, La Burla, and many more. So next, we have Fabian de la Rosa. So Fabian de la Rosa was known as the master of genre in the Philippine arts. He is the uncle and at the same time mentor of Fernando Amorsolo. So the planting rice is one of his most famous artworks. He was able to win his first gold medal in St. Louis Exposition in 1904. Next, we have Fernando Amorsolo. So, Fernando Amorsolo was known as the grand old man of Philippine art. So, he is a portraitist and a painter of rural landscape. And he is also known for his HD chiaroscuro technique. So, chiaroscuro technique is a light means light dark it involves the interplay of light and dark so he painted and sketched more than 10,000 pieces over his lifetime he's on my way home in 1945 pays homage to the workers both human and animal alike who work the lush crop fields from dawn to dusk from dusk to dawn rather so, next is Carlos <laughs> Modesto. <laughs> so, Carlos Botong Villaluz Francisco was one of the first Filipino modernists and he made use of geometric forms and linear painting. So, his famous artwork is the progress of medicine in the Philippines that has been restored three times and a famous replica of his mural resides at the lobby of the Philippine General Hospital. Mm, next, okay. oh, so, next is Francisco Cochin. So, Francisco Cochin was a Filipino comic book illustrator and writer. So, he is known as the king of comics and the dean of Philippine illustrators. So, some of his major artworks are the Hagibis sa Ibang Daigdig, Duwag Ang Sumuko, Thor, Pedro Penduco, Tigadong Lundag, and many more. So, next is Federico Aguilar Alcuaz. So, he was a Filipino artist known for his diverse body of work with gestures, paint, with gestural paintings, watercolor works, abstract sculpture and texture art so he was confirmed as the national artist for visual arts painting sculpture and mixed media in 2009 one of his famous artworks was the tres marias in 1982 where it it was able to sold at 1 million four hundred ninety thousand which is wow. nine, <laughs> nine times above the That's million. value estimate so the more notable visual artists in the philippines are cesar f legaspi and some of his notable artworks are the man and the woman in 1945 and gadgets in 1947 next is hernando r ocampo and some of his notable artworks are the calvary in 1948 inanang balon and Carabao and Man and Carabao in 1969. Next is Arturo Arluz. Some of his notable artworks are the Great Performance, Performing Quartet, Cyclists and Acrobats, and the Motula 2. Ang Kiyoko and some of his notable artworks are the Crucifixion, 
1969, Cockerell in 1976, and Thinking Man in 1979. Next is Benedicto Cabrera, and some of his notable artworks are The Crisis in Humanity in 2007, Tabel in 2003, Ed the Gesture in 1981, and Portrait of Caroline. It was a portrait dedicated to his wife. Next is Abdul Mari Asya Hilmao. So some of his most notable artworks are the Sarimanok series, Muslim Motif, and Water Buffalo. Next is Jose T. Joya. Some of his most notable artworks are the Grenadian Arabesque in 1958, Face Transfiguration and Heels of Nico. So, if you're going to look at the internet for the artworks of this Filipino artist, masasabi niyo na lang talaga na sana all mahal. <laughs> and that's the <laughs> Alright, thank you very much, Ma'am Angie. Yeah, sana all daw mahal. <laughs> Alright, so yan po yung ating mga list ng mga notable Filipino visual artists, okay, and their artworks. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. And let's proceed na po. I think, last discussed na ba tayo? Yes, po. Okay, and we have ma'am Rina Bonita. Ma'am, kao na po. Good morning once again. I am Rina Quitalia Bonita, and I will discuss to you the essence of visual art. So the essence of visual arts or the importance of visual arts, it serves as a stimulus to galvanize different emotions and interpretations to its audience, its kindless ideas and wondrous things to both the artists and viewers. And also it is the fundamental component of human experience reflecting the world and the time in which we live. So art can help us understand our history, our culture, our lives and especially the experience of others in a manner that can be achieved through other means. So the visual art is everywhere. Mm-hmm. We we may not know it, but visual art is the means we communicate. It is the food we eat. It is in the food we eat. The 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 clothes we wear, the road we pass on, the website we navigate, and the store we buy from, and also the and also practic and practically everywhere we set our eyes on. Yes. So, yun. so here's the summary of visual arts. Visual arts are the, those art forms appreciated or perceived primarily by sight which occupies space that is either two-dimensional or three-dimensional. The categories of visual arts are fine arts, decorative arts, and contemporary art. Fine arts are developed primarily for aesthetics and judged for its beauty and meaningfulness. Examples of fine arts are painting, sculpture, Drawing, watercolor, graphics, and archi- architecture. So, decorative arts are made for functions, but retain an artist's style and still require talent to create. This includes tapestry, ceramics, mosaic, mosaic art, glass art, jewelry, wood work, interior design, textile arts, and crafts. Contemporary arts is form of art conceived in modern times includes photographer pho- photography, art print, video art, animation, graffiti and installation art. Next, medium of visual arts denote the ways by which an artist communicate his idea. These are materials which are used by an artist to interpret their feelings or thoughts. One way of doing analysis of visual arts is using theme, mode, mood, tone, and composition. To further understand visual arts, the elements and the principles of visual arts are used. So the principles of visual arts are harmony, 
rhythm, balance, proportion, emphasis, variety, and movement. The uh, and the elements are line, shape, form, space, color, and texture. So the discuss and discuss it well, naman po. I hope you learn. All right. Thank you very much, Ma'am Rina Bonita. Ayos. So, natapos na din tayo sa wakas. <laughs> okay. So, ladies and gentlemen. Ayan. So, hindi na po ako magdadagdag lang kung ano pa. Thank you very much, Ma'am Rina Bonita, for that summary. Okay. And the relevance of arts in our daily lives. Ladies and gentlemen, din na po nagtatapos ang ating discussion. All right. So, medyo madami kayo ngayon natutunan sa ating discussion regarding po sa visual arts. Maraming salamat po sa ating mga discussants ngayong umaga. Okay? Hopefully, napusog namin kayo hindi lang po sa mga nakita niyong visual, kundi pati sa mga impormasyon na dapat ninyong malaman dito po sa topic natin which is visual arts. Maraming salamat sa ating mga discussant. Once again, I would like to call on again ating mga discussant and for your word of thanks ngayong araw. Okay? So ladies and gentlemen, okay, once again po, we have here Ayan, Ma'am Nicole Nuda. Ma'am, word of thanks po. Um, thank you for listening. And I'm pretty sure that you've learned something and I hope you'll be able to use it in the near future. That's all. Thank you very much, Ma'am Nuda. And Ma'am Julian Listango, word of thanks, Ma'am. Thank you sa ating mga viewers, sa panonood. Sana marami po kayong natutunan sa aming discussion ngayon. All right, thank you very much, Mom Listanko and Mom Brenzel. Where do thanks, Paul? Thank you for listening, everyone. I hope you've learned something from us. Ciao, adios, I'm done. Louis Lindul na pati agency. All right, thank you very much, Mom Brenzel and Mom Rina. Where do thanks, Paul? Hindi na pati napin dito. Thank you for listening, to. To all viewers, thank you for listening. I hope you learned something. All right, thank you very much, Mom. Di di na naidulot so ano yan? Lubag na gayd so kamot niyo. Inerlus kasi mam punita. Hahabul tayo. Of course, we have Mom Angeli Medina. Mom, word of thanks po. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have learned something. I know. Um, I hope na inspired din kayo. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Mom Medina and Mom Krisha Guenza. Word of thanks po. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you for listening, and I hope you learned something from in our discussion. All yeah. right, thank you very much, Mom. And we have also here, Mom Angie Dalma. Mom, word of thanks po. So, ayon, hi, Mom. Thank you for watching and listening. Sa mga manonood palang, I hope you. Thank you very much, Mom Angie, and we have Mom Christine Acuña. Mom, word of thanks. Bye everyone. I, I'm sure that you learned a lot from us. And have a nice day ahead. All right. Thank you very much, Mama Kunya. Mama Angelica Sabaresa. Hello, Mama. More thanks, Pop. So thank you for listening. I hope you gain a new information regarding to our talk. So that's. All right. Thank you very much, Mom. And we have also Mom Alia Salire. More thanks, Pop, Mom. So thank you everyone for listening. I hope. And thank you all. Thank you also for staying with us. All right, maraming salamat, Mom Saliri, and not but okay, nothing but that list. We also have here, Mom Maria Lourdes Makiran. Mom, what are the things? All right, thank you very much, po, and hopefully na may natutunan tayo ng lahat. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, ating mga discussant. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, maraming salamat po for ah. sa pag-aantabay dito sa ating uh, two-hour session po ng visual arts. So, sa isang araw lang po at na-discuss po namin yung lahat pong konsepto na gusto ninyong malaman po regarding sa visual arts and how to appreciate visual arts. Ladies and gentlemen, sila po ating mga discussions po ngayong araw okay, along po sa ating arts appreciation subject this second semester 2021-2022. Ladies and gentlemen, give them a round of applause. Maraming salamat po, ladies. Congratulations and have a good lunch day. All right, this is your host Eji Kasaytan, and nagiwan ng sangkatagay in this time of pandemic para matuto ng lepan lepet. Hmm, tatandaan dia det, bad mapakne. Marami salamat ko and have a good day. Happy lunch time. Bye bye.
Congrats, Pop. <laughs>